Hey guys, Josh here from J Media. Well, it's time to make another tutorial video, except today's video is not going to be about DSLR stabilization. It's going to be about sliding. Yes, sliders are awesome tools. And whether you're a hobbyist or professional, these have to be in your toolbox. These sliders create such beautiful and cinematic shots that it just changes the whole perspective of videos. So it's really important to have these things. These sliders should be one of the first things that you buy after you buy your camera. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to properly use a slider and how sliders add cinematic and artistic elements in your videos. Let's get started. in mind that sliders come in different sizes and of course there's a whole bunch of different brands to choose from. Well for my liking I chose a 48 inch slider. This is a typical or generic slider that you'll find on eBay or Amazon. It's a Chinese slider but actually extremely well built. There's not one bit of plastic on this slider and I have to say that it's just fantastic quality and I'm gonna go over a couple of cool features on this slider. So for those of you who don't know how a slider works, basically we have two rails on the inside here. And we have this area, the mounting plate for the camera, which is what we call a carriage. And this carriage obviously goes back and forth on the slider here. Now depending on the brand of the slider, usually the carriage has four bearings that lie underneath the, uh, the carriage and right along the uh, rails in here. That's what makes such smooth movements. So let's get a close-up here of the slider. Here we can see the carriage, the railings, the silver parts inside here are the railings, and we have our legs here, right there, right there, two pairs of legs, and of course they're detachable. And what's really cool about these legs is that they can be adjusted so you get perfect level shots. These generic sliders usually come with a bubble level on the carriage here. So it's really easy to check your bubble level. This blue knob here comes standard on every single slider that is made on the market. It's a tensioner, and these tensioners are what allows us to make really smooth and really subtle sliding shots. You can actually place the slider on up to three tripods, either vertically or horizontally. You have a whole bunch of different mounting holes here from a 3 8 inch screw to a quarter inch screw. These are basic screw sizes that come with your tripod. So it makes it really easy to mount on. To mount my slider, I'm going to be using a fancier W717 fluid head tripod. These are $150, pretty cheap to what's on the market. It's a really nice fluid head and of course you have your ball head so you can do a whole bunch of different X and Y axis changes to make perfect leveled shots. So to mount on the slider, we first want to remove the quick release plate that is on the top of your tripod. Here it is. It's rather small, 
but it's good enough to get the shots that we need. Notice there are two screws on here. I put a 3 8 inch and a quarter inch screw so we could put both on the slider to make it more secure. Let's go ahead and do that. Since I'm only going to be using one tripod, I'm going to go ahead and take the quick release plate and mount it directly in the center of the slider. You want to make sure that these screws are nice and tight. Okay, once our quick release plate has been attached to the middle of the slider, we're ready to slide it onto the tripod. So, to slide it on, it works basically just like a normal quick release system. You just slide it on, wait for that click, and you're ready to tighten up your slider. Well, it looks like we're all attached, and we're ready for the good stuff to start, alright? Now, there's one extra thing that you do need to buy with your slider. It's called a ball head. Here's your generic ball head. Of course, it's made in China, but surprisingly, it is all metal, not one bit of plastic on here. It's really, really nice. It's got a ball here, uh, about an uh, inch in diameter, so it's a pretty big ball, and it supports up to 18 pounds, so you can put a rather decent heavy cameras on here. So why do we need a ball head? Well, if we simply place our cameras on the slider carriage here, it'll be really difficult to get angled shots. Our ball heads here that we buy, really make it easy to get any type of angle that we want. Plus, we can get vertical angled shots when we place the slider in vertical shots, so we can get nice crane footage up and down. These are not branded ball heads. They're generic made, so you can find them anywhere on eBay or Amazon. To mount your ball head onto the slider, it's really simple. Just go ahead and screw it onto your carriage. Maybe you want it to be nice and tight. There you go. And we can go ahead and loosen up these knobs and make sure that our quick release system is nice and loose so we can align it properly. And then we can tighten up the knobs. These ball heads come with a nice little quick release system, but be careful, they do not have a safety notch. So they can just slide out, and you want to be really careful because without these safety notches, once this tensioner here is loose, your camera can fall off. So always remember to double check your tensioner before removing your camera. So here's our quick release plate. We can go ahead and put it onto our cameras. I'm going to be using a 5D Mark II. It works just like any other quick release plate. You just screw it on to the hole at the bottom of your camera here. And to put it on, just like any other quick release plate, just slide it and tighten up that tensioner. Now before we start shooting, and before I show you some techniques about how to use the slider properly, let's talk about what kind of lenses we want to be using. It's actually up to you. You can use fisheye lenses. You can use 28, 35, 50, 85, 100. It's all up to you. Just remember that 85 millimeter, 100 millimeter, any telephoto lens will be able to see a little bit more vibration in there. So it's really important to get a nice quality slider so we don't see any of that vibration. But 85 and 100 millimeters uh, telephoto lenses, they really give us a nice shallow depth of field. So it's always a good idea to use that. I'm using a Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, and it actually gives me a really nice depth of field. So we're going to be using that today. Usually, when you're shooting promo shoots like with cars or showing off buildings, you want to stick to wide angle lenses. That way, everybody's seeing the whole big picture. So wider is always better for promotional shots. For documentaries and interviews, it's always a good idea to use the telephoto lenses. Even 50 millimeter will work fine. 50 millimeter actually works beautifully because it gives me a lot of light and I'm really happy with the footage that comes out of this 50 millimeter. Now you want to check to make sure that you have a leveled camera. You have a bubble level on your carriage on your slider here, make sure it's directly in the center. If not, you can loosen up the ball head on your tripod to center everything nicely. Okay, that's centered. So let's start with our basic sliding moves. We have the horizontal shot. It's pretty simple, but it takes a lot of technique to get the shots that you want. For example, we don't want any shaky movements when using a slider. So it's always a good idea to use two hands goes nice and slow, just like that. To make some shots even smoother, you can go ahead and engage the tensioner here. Now when sliding, I always recommend to use two hands, just to avoid any extra shake. Don't forget.
forget that this takes a lot of practice. No matter what slider you get, you will not be able to get it out of the box working 100%. So it's always good to get your technique right. Two hands, and you'll get nice and smooth footage. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the next part of the video. Now, this is one of my favorite types of shots, angled shots. So we're gonna start off lower and then end up higher. Let's go ahead and set up the tripod for that. Now, before we tilt the tripod head, we want to center the camera and lock it up tight, so that way it won't move. Then we can loosen up the tripod head and go ahead and tilt it. Just like that. Next, we want to make sure that the camera is nice and centered and straight. Just like that. Well, that's good enough for right now. And we can go ahead and lock it up. Now you're starting to see the importance of having a ball head. All right, let me go ahead and loosen up the tensioner. All right, I'll bring the camera down here and I'll start recording here. Watch the cool effect that this slider can give us. And I'm going to go ahead and lock it up up here. Try your best to use two hands. One on each side, or one down here, and one up here. Just to avoid any extra shake. Now going down on an angled shot is pretty simple. We want to rely on the tensioner when going down, just so we can get our smoothness. Now, when using a tensioner, it's kind of difficult to keep the consistency of your speed. So we want to remain to keep our hands placed near the carriage or on the carriage just so we get the speed nice and smooth and consistent. So let's go ahead and start declining. Now for the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to do crane or boom shots. They are both vertical shots, just different names. These are extremely difficult and take the most, the most skill to achieve. So please stay tuned for my next video. Also check out my website at www.joshmorganmedia.com. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments or email me. Also, I'll be talking about how to properly grease your slider. So stay tuned for that. If you have any other questions regarding this video or any other topic regarding any of my other videos, please comment or email me. Thank you very much and stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.